Okay, so I think we're live and I think we have sound. That was the, the problem just now. So thanks to everyone who has joined us once. Thanks to everyone who's joining us the second time. <laughs> um, we're here for our webinar this afternoon, Making Agile Serious Fun. And before we get started, we're just going to run a couple of introductions. So first thing first, who are Box UK? So Box UK uh, is a software and web development consultancy. We specialize in user-centered design, iterative development, and the optimization of digital platforms. So there's a couple of logos there of clients that we, um, that we work with. And I think for now, that's, that's probably enough there. So who are we? Um, my name's Lisa. I'm the head of marketing here at Box UK. And with me today, I've got Ali Brock, who is one of our business analyst team and also one of our agile trainers. Just before I hand over to Ali, though, um, to let everyone know that we will be taking questions towards the end, um, as long as we have the time. So as we're going through, if anything kind of comes up that you want to ask, if you direct that to us on Twitter using the handle at BoxUK. And also, the hashtag is there to be used, making agile fun. Um, I think that's everything from me for now. So with all that said, I'm going to hand over to Ali. Thanks, Lisa. Um, as, Ali, as Lisa said, I'm Ali. And part of my role at Box UK is to provide coaching to organizations that are interested in adopting agile as a way of working. So before we go through the webinar, um, if Agile is new to you, then in a nutshell, what is it all about? So Agile development is different. It's a more collaborative way of managing projects. Teams deliver products in small steps, which allows customers to make changes as needed. It promotes flexibility, responsiveness, and cross-functional self-empowered teams. Um, Agile promotes lightweight documentation and a fail-first approach, which means teams get to try some things out, get feedback quickly, and then rapidly adapt. So, and as you can see from the stats that are on your screen um, from Vision 1 State of Agile report, a very high percentage of people agree with how using Agile uh, can give you a number of benefits. For example, 85% of people think Agile improves team productivity, 80% feel it gives them a faster time to market, and a huge 87% feel it helps with managing changing priorities. Uh, we recommend Googling the state of Agile. It's a really good resource if you need information to help you get buy-in within your organizations. So that's all pretty clear cut then, really, isn't it? Um, you'd almost say it's a bit of a no-brainer that as an organization, you want to be adopting Agile or looking to adopt Agile. It's certainly yeah. got a strong enough business case there that on board. Um, so let's have a look, if we can, at um, a scenario. So. You have an organization um, that is maybe already working with Agile. Um, maybe some parts of that are working better than others. And your teams or someone in that organization has just been trying to improve things. Yeah. Um, but something about what they're doing isn't, isn't quite sticking. So, so where, where do we go from there? Um, well, it's interesting uh, you say things aren't quite sticking. Um, one of the reasons for that is learning is hard, learning new things is hard. Um, and maybe you want to start training your teams internally to help create a better understanding of Agile. If so, it's really worth spending a little time thinking about how you're going to do this. Um, one of the reasons learning is hard is because people are generally easily distracted. A study by Microsoft in 2015 found that people generally lose concentration after around eight seconds, uh, which is means officially we now have a shorter attention span than goldfish. Brilliant. I know. Um, and that's a bit of a problem when it comes to learning about Agile because Agile is such a huge topic. There's a lot to cover if you're going to get your team on board. And depending on the level of knowledge teams have and how they currently work, you're possibly going to try and convince them their entire thinking and the way they work is bonkers. Um, influencing an easily distracted person's mindset is no easy task. 
Um, when you start coaching them, how much they even going to remember anyway? So the numbers will vary a lot, and you'll see some stats come up over the next two slides. Uh, depending on the research you look at, and it is dependent on a number of factors. For an example, an individual's learning style, uh, their prior knowledge of the subject, their motivation to learn, and also the style of training that is being provided. And while the stats do vary, it's a fact your teams are not going to remember everything that you say to them. So how do people learn? Well, if we take a step back a moment and we think about the different ways that people do learn, what you can see here is Neil Fleming's SPARK model, which identifies four different learning styles. So you have visual learners who have a preference for seeing, they use visual aids that represent ideas, uh, for example, slides, graphs, charts, diagrams, even videos. And then you get auditory, who best learn through listening to lectures, discussions, podcasts, etc. Uh, you have readers who learn through reading. Uh, that could be books or articles, white papers, and even websites. And also kinesthetic learners who learn by moving and touching and trying things out, so activities and experiments, for example. What's really important is um, over 50% of people fall into this kinesthetic category on some level. So it's really, really important when you're thinking about new ways to help your teams to learn new skills, you consider the ways that people learn. So we found that one of the best ways to incorporate kinesthetic activities into learning is by, well, we play games, um, agile games. So we're not talking about hopscotch in the car park <laughs> here. Um, these are structured games that can help to demonstrate agile concepts. So we play games because our brains can only absorb so much information at one time. After around um, 18 minutes, our brains begin to suffer from cognitive backlog, which is interestingly why TED Talks are only ever 18 minutes long. Playing games can energize a room and they keep attention levels high. They encourage teamwork and collaboration. And agile, right, it's all about collaboration, yeah? <laughs> And um, when you play, you also engage the creative side of your brain and you silence your inner editor. So this is the barrier that senses all your thoughts and ideas. So you put your brain in a perfect state to learn new things. Um, we use a whole series of games when we're introducing and upskilling agile concepts. And we'll give you a link to all of those later in the webinar. But for today, let's have a look at how you'd work with your teams on concepts such as uh, feedback loops and iterative planning. Battleships. Okay, so hopefully you're all familiar with Battleships. It's a game that's been around longer than Agile. Um, you may now be wondering how on earth playing it can upskill your teams in using Agile. So given all the stuff that we've already talked about and cognitive backlog, for example, rather than me explain how playing battleships can help, um, I'm going to get Lisa to play battleships. Okay. Okay, <laughs> so let's play battleships. Let's play battleships. Okay, so let's get that up here. Okay, so this is an online version of uh, Battleships that we've put together that you can try out after the webinar. So Lisa, all you need to do is hit start. Okay, so in this run through the game, all I want you to do within five minutes, I want you to place your 30 hits. So you've got seven battleships that you need to destroy, right? and you just need to put 30 hits within that grid. All of them, so I just put the 30 in right just now. Just 30 in, yeah. Okay. Anywhere I want. Anywhere you want. Okay. Ooh. Um. Okay, so uh, do you have a plan? Um, not, well, it's quite hard. To, yeah, not particularly. Okay. Because I don't really know, so I guess. I guess, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to sink these ships. Yeah, so you've got seven ships there and you can see the number of grid squares that they're going to be taking up. Okay, so, so I can't keep just putting single ones, can I? So no. let's, let's try. Well, you can, but you're not going to do very well. Okay, yeah. Um, let's put a couple around here. Maybe let's try, let's try some corners. Oh, cover the corners, good. Um, 16 left. It's actually quite hard. 
because well because I don't really know what I'm doing I can't, do you have, I can't have, see do what you have I'm a doing. strategy or no okay. um well I guess coverage so let's, <laughs> that's a good let's strategy kind of, <laughs> um but I've only got 30 ships so yeah just kind of here there and everywhere yeah okay so you've got eight remaining you've still got time uh, yeah i guess i'm kind of torn between like do i spend time playing or do i just throw them anyway so you've got three left one two ooh, the ooh, last, last one, one. make it count three okay. okay so that's your 30 shots yeah and if you click confirm shots it's going to show you how successful you've been okay so you have sunk one quite small ship okay um and you had 10 hits so you're quite close actually on some of them yeah. um but you've only actually sunk one ship yeah so i think if i give you a chance to play that again yeah but this time you'll get feedback on each of your hits so if you can hit continue okay and then start Okay, so same as uh, last time, you've got 30 hits, you've still got five minutes, so nothing's changed. The only difference is now you're going to get feedback whenever you place a hit. So just... Ooh! Ooh, Sorry. exciting. <laughs> that was um, good. That's a bit more exciting than okay, the last so version. You, right, you've got feedback. Right, right, okay, so which way are we... Which way are we oh, yes. Okay, so you've already sent a ship. Brilliant. And you've only used six. <gasps> Brilliant. So what are you doing differently this time? Um, well, you're responding to what you see, aren't you? Or what yeah. you hear, yeah. however you want to put it. So obviously there's, there's a hit here, but I haven't finished yeah. my ship. So I'm just taking... The adjacent. Oh, this is going to be good. Look at that. Oh, you got the big one. The adjacent Amazing. squares. Um, and then picking oh somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> is there a record for this? Um, there is a record. I think the most that we've got is six uh, ships sunk. Okay. So we've never had anyone uh, sunk all the ships. Oh. oh. Okay. Uh, uh, Doing good. Uh, oh. Okay, so now um, when you place your next hit, what yeah. are you basing your plan on now? Well, I guess I've got two two square ships and one one square ship. I'm yeah. not sure if they've probably got official names, but um, I think they have. I can't remember. Oop, they are. That was an accident. Um, so I'm looking for where could those ships be yeah. in the space that's remaining, I guess. And the time. And oh yeah, the time. Yeah. Don't let me rush you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I don't have five left. It's getting tricky now. No. Oh, oh, amazing! I was, I was just about to leave that corner for somewhere okay, else. Okay, so you're up to five. You have two, and you, in theory, you can get either one of those ships with your two remaining hits. No pressure, but you could do it. I could. Maybe not. Oh. That's okay. That was, <laughs> that was really good. Oh, no. If you want to hit continue, okay. we'll get a summary of um, what's done. Okay, so both run through the games. You have 30 hits. Yeah. Um, you can see the time taken in the first run through versus the second run through. Not that much more, but you did spend more time when you had the iterative planning. Yeah. Um, number of hits, so you've got 10 on the first run through and 15 on the second run through. Mm -hmm. The really important one is on the first run through, you sank one ship, but on the second run through, you sank five. So, in terms of success, you were way more successful yeah. um, on the second run through. And that's down in part to being able to plan your next move. So, if you translate that into Agile, it's doing that 
little and often planning and responding to feedback. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. And actually, as you're doing it, so as you're actually playing it, the, the first time around is actually quite hard and feels a bit silly in a way because you're kind of throwing all of this effort into doing something that you can't... Absolutely. Um, you're, you can't redirect what you're doing, whereas no, the second no. one, obviously, you're able to do that, which I guess is... Yeah, so the first the run through, you're planning when you know the least. Yeah. So it's just all of it is guesswork. Yeah. Um, not saying all projects are run that way, but if you plan up front when you know the least about your project, that can set you up for failure. Yeah, okay, great. Makes that was, sense. That was, yeah, it was quite good, that good was, fun. That was well. a good run yeah, yeah. Okay, so we get back to, so we'll come back to here. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk us through what we've learnt? Yeah, so as I think we've mentioned briefly, um, planning up front when you have the least amount of knowledge is kind of like using a crystal ball. You're trying to predict the future based on a number of possible outcomes that you don't actually know about yet. So it's a very unreliable way of, of planning. Yeah. Um, and that iterative planning, you can adapt your approach for better results. So on the second run through the game, each time you hit the opposing team's ships, you could change your plans and target locations nearby to sync them. So you can see from that the ability to do that iterative planning and respond to feedback made you if, if you think about the game as your product yeah you you delivered more features so each one of those ships is a feature and so you did way better on that second five versus through. one yeah five versus one are you competitive <laughs> <laughs> um and that scoring hits but not sinking ships is similar to developing new features but run, running out of time or money for testing and release so you have you don't have a shippable product um and yeah ultimately iterative planning ships more products <laughs> brilliant okay yeah great so um let me cover off a couple of things um how would you how would you roll out this kind of game within an organization so do you, do you just kind of direct people to the to the game and let them play it themselves or well i think you can do um i prefer to do this in a more of a uh, more kind of old school way so we have a paper-based version where you have the grids up on a3 sheets mm. and you you get teams of people so you get two teams and, and get them to kind of compete against each other. So back to the learning new things, um, doing that in a kinesthetic way where people are up on their feet, responding to their team's feedback can really be a, a kind of a light bulb moment. We find in, in coaching quite a lot when we go through this exercise, it kind of really puts people into the right mindset for what Agile is all about. Okay, and what about, so, we talk. I mean, we're talking about it here, aren't we? Shipping more product. But what? What if you're not in a software organisation? Is this still relevant? I, I think so. Um, if you look at, at well, Lisa, your role in marketing, you might have a marketing strategy and you might have a, a plan. But I can bet that you respond to feedback, and so as part of your rolling out of different campaigns, you'd be responding to find out how successful was the previous one. So yeah. you probably even though you may not be aware of what you're doing, you're doing iterative planning. So you wouldn't plan a whole marketing campaign for the next 12 months not anymore. without knowing <laughs> if each maybe, of those Maybe a few years back. Well, yeah, it, without knowing that if, if your campaigns aren't successful, well, you might need to change your plan, do things a bit differently. So you're already doing it. Um, I've um, coached uh, event organising um, company yeah. and event planning is another one where you do get more success through iterative planning so you can still use agile techniques even if it's not for software okay and I guess um, the games just thinking about it the they, they, they're useful for upskilling teams so getting your teams brought in but I guess there's a role for this kind of thing in um, executive team or C-suite team kind of buy into adopting Agile as well because you can show that whole 
um, return on investment piece, can't you? So absolutely expended for results brought in the, yeah. the number of yeah. ships. And when so we're talking about C-suite, no, there's nothing like results and, yeah. and, and data to kind of back up what you're going to do. So being able to see that difference between that plan up front and that iterative planning and that you were way more successful can really help. There can be times when, when you do the first run through, you might actually score higher in your delayed feedback versus your iterative one. Right. But that is purely down to luck. And if anybody wants to try out the game, send us screenshots of your results screen so we can see how successful you are versus the first and second run through. That sounds like a good idea. It does, you can it? tweet those to us. Um, <laughs> yeah, at Box UK. And I think, I'm um, just looking at the time. I know we've overrun because um, because of the sound issues that we had to start with. So I think we will call it a day there. Um, the link you've got up on screen now, that will take you to all of the Agile games that are available on the website. So you've got Battleships there, you've also got um, Planning Monopoly and Sinking Ship and some um, other retro tools. Uh, so jump over there and have a look. Let us know how you get on with everything. Um, and also, if you want to ask any questions, if you want to talk, then just drop us a line. Other than that, thank you very much for joining us um, and hopefully we'll see you soon on another session. Thank yeah. you, Ali. Thank you, it's fun. <laughs>